So you want to choose a phone that is free from surveillance or tracking. Many people think they know how to do this by choice of phone, carrier, and SIM card. Can you really avoid surveillance on a cell phone? Coming up next. To avoid surveillance by governments and internet platforms, some people make choices without thinking through how easy it is to surveil someone with a phone. Is it really possible to evade surveillance by the government, your carrier, or Google, Facebook, and Amazon? We will go through the typical choices and I will show you what works and what doesn't. I will also talk about how this will be affected by 5G at the end of the video. Now, let's just say for the moment that you're trying to keep your movements incognito from a government, perhaps as a journalist. This is a very legit expectation since your movements and contacts can reveal your sources and perhaps endanger a source. Or you can just be irritated by the invasion of privacy like me and want to come up with a solution that just makes you harder to trace. Let's go through the choices of getting a phone and see where the problem areas are. The number one surveillance problem, the purchase. So first, the safer choice is typically to get a burner phone at a large retailer like Best Buy. After that, you need to get a SIM card. There are many GSM providers that can provide you with SIM cards, but in the US, the actual carriers are only T-Mobile and AT&T for GSM. Then you need a plan, either a prepaid plan or a subscription monthly plan. Or maybe you get a locked phone from a CDMA carrier like Verizon. Right here, you will encounter the first issue. Can you possibly hide your financial transaction relating to purchasing of the phone, SIM card, or plan? Because of the Patriot Act and Know Your Customer Laws, KYC, this is going to be very hard. How about cash? Cash can be used to purchase the phone, yes. You can even possibly buy SIM cards with cash. But for a recurring bill, you will need a credit card. Use a prepaid credit card? Yup, you can do that. How about a prepaid SIM card? But often this limits your choice of phone and that's problematic. Prepaid SIMs and prepaid plans use very specific locked Android phones. Android is a problem, which I will explain later. Anyway, all of these are still traceable. Bitcoin credit card, out of country credit cards, prepaid credit from a foreign country. Now you're seeing the difficulty. So the first issue is that your financial transactions may be difficult, if not impossible to hide, at least for normal folks. You can hide some of this, just a few tips. You can pay in cash, of course, for your phone. But because of surveillance cameras at the stores, this match can easily be made. A better choice that I might suggest is to buy a used phone and have it shipped to a different address than your usual. Again, this requires a lot of pre-planning. You can also buy SIM cards from a reseller to hide it even more. Now, if you're not a criminal, this may not concern you as much since this does not identify a particular phone so far. Number two surveillance problem, the type of phone. Depending on the type of phone you buy, you could be quite easily identified. Let's say you buy a typical Android or iPhone. This could be new, used, or burner. That doesn't matter. The first thing you need to consider is your login ID, your Apple ID, or your Google ID. And if you purchase apps, what credit card is it associated with? Here again, there are multiple identifiers that you're giving. Your regular Google ID and Apple ID, after being used once with the phone, now matches your identity to the SIM card IMSI identifier. That's like the serial number of your SIM card. Each time you change a SIM card, it's an easy match from your Google and Apple identifiers to IMSI. And there's also a hardware identifier called IMEI. So this means whatever phone you use, it's a smartphone and it requires you to log in to Google or Apple and then you are zucked. Even if it's not a smartphone, every switch of a SIM card is tied 
to the phone because it's tied to the IMEI. Next issue with Android and Apple phones. They all have built-in Wi-Fi triangulation, which can spot your location within six feet. Watch my video on how phones are tracked using Wi-Fi triangulation. This is built into the OS and it cannot be turned off for Apple and Google. You can turn it off only for third-party apps. This does not even include GPS tracking. This leads you to think of flip phones. The problem is that flip phones are not as useful in day-to-day -day use because most people text more than call. And it's very hard to text on a flip phone. So here's an answer. The key is that your operating system on the smartphone must not have Android or iOS. This is why I don't like buying prepaid burner phones because they force Android on you. The two possibilities are to use an old Blackberry, that's one. I have a link in the description for my preferred ones. And the other choice is going to be available soon and it's a Purism Librem 5 phone. It's a Linux phone. The Librem 5 is not yet available as of today, but you can pre-order it. I'll put a link in the description. The number three surveillance problem is the government. Even if you manage to not use your identity so far, and you manage to get some secret credit card with no trace, and have some non-Android and non-iOS phones, you are still easily recognized by your habits, especially by a government. Here's a non-sophisticated way you can be tracked by any law enforcement agency. You are known by who you call. You could have 50 burner phones and 500 SIM cards, but you call your wife at night. Rather than worrying about the 500 MZ identifiers on your burner phones, I just track your wife. This is an example of a non-hacker way of thinking. We cybersecurity folks know that a direct attack is not always the easiest. Surveilling who you connect to is called a side channel attack. I can pinpoint who you are simply by a cluster of phone numbers you call. Now, if you're dealing with the infamous three-letter agency, that one has more direct identification capabilities. It's called voice fingerprinting. Each and every person on their watch list, which could be every American, has a voice print. Snowden revealed this a couple of years ago. It's very precise. So if your voice is heard on any phone system, digital communication like Skype and others, then you can be pinpointed in short order. As quickly as a few seconds apparently, certainly in a few minutes. For those of you with an Alexa Echo, Siri and Google Assistant, you should know that you're happily feeding the voice print algorithm. So can you really hide from a government with a cell phone? Only temporarily, with one time use burner phones. That's about all you can do. The number four surveillance problem, your carrier. Your phone carrier automatically tracks you using an identifier called IMSI, and it also tracks your hardware with the identifier called the IMEI. When you create an account and activate a SIM card, your phone will take on a unique IMSI identifier in the worldwide cell network. It will be associated with the physical device, the IMEI. Your phone reports your MZ to your cell tower. So it is easy for a carrier to determine where you are at any given moment, maybe within a quarter of a mile based on which cell tower your MZ is found. If you took the precautions possibly taken from what I said earlier, it is possible that the carrier may not know who owns a particular MZ by name, although it can be matched to a financial transaction. But clearly, every phone call or location where this particular MZ was associated with will be logged by the carrier. And this includes internet access, IP addresses, and websites visited if it's a smartphone. A VPN here will help you with the digital side. It will keep the carrier from knowing anything other than the fact that you're using a session with a VPN. A possible evasion solution here is to carry multiple SIM cards and then rotate them, and also to retire SIM cards frequently. But the IMEI or device is known. That's why people use throwaway burner phones. 
Also, a carrier will know you purchased SIM cards from the financial transaction. To at least make it more difficult to connect the dots with the financial transaction, the solution is to age the SIM cards, meaning buy SIM cards ahead of time, but don't use them for a while. This may not be foolproof either because it depends on how the SIM cards were purchased. In other words, think about my earlier comments on financial tracing. The number five surveillance problem is Stingray. Stingray is a type of device used by law enforcement, government, and even hackers to be a man in the middle on your phone activity. This type of device could spy on your phone calls, texts, and internet traffic. A Stingray type of device, and there are other models now, can route your traffic through itself by intercepting your conversation with a cell tower. It does this by tracking your IMSI. Now, how does a law enforcement organization track your IMSI? Simple, physical surveillance. By being close to you, they can identify all the IMSIs in the area and your phone will announce itself. As you can see here, having a burner phone would be useless. Solution, keep the phone off. Put it in a Faraday bag so it doesn't try to connect to a cell tower. This makes you look like you have no phone. Or take out the SIM card. The MZ is associated with the SIM card. This way, you can still communicate over Wi-Fi at Starbucks. The number six surveillance problem is 5G. 5G has some interesting features which will make use of a phone even more difficult to hide. The problem is that 5G uses something called beamforming which basically means the cell tower points its antenna beam at you when you use your phone. This doesn't take a genius to figure out that this is like laser focused location tracking. It will likely point to your location within a few feet. This should tell you something. Using newer technology doesn't make it better for you. I'd rather be an old tech with 2G and 3G if I can help it. But even that will not last long. In the US, only T-Mobile offers 2G and 3G now. So our dates of some privacy are numbered. In conclusion, you can see that use of a phone is fraught with surveillance dangers that are almost impossible to fully hide from. Fortunately for most of us, government surveillance may not be our main concern. So take some of my tips and hide some of your data from those you can hide from. A point that's important here, a Librem Linux phone, which I introduced to you earlier, will not stop any kind of government surveillance or carrier tracking, but it may allow you to use your favorite smartphone apps without having to use 2G or 3G or using a flip phone or old Blackberry. So a Librem 5 Linux phone is limited to preventing Google, Apple, and third-party app surveillance. With a VPN, it can also reduce carrier spying. It isn't perfect, but it's an improvement. If you can handle the inconvenience, using an older BlackBerry is my preferred solution. It has phone and texting and some internet capability. Let's not make it easy for third parties to track our comings and goings. But hiding from a government can be close to impossible. That's likely why Snowden doesn't use a cell phone. So if this is your opposition, like for dissidents, and journalists, then don't use a cell phone. If you like my content, subscribe to my channel so you can learn more about my attempts to keep you and your communications safe.